The Tax-Free Home Savings Account, or FHSA for short, is a completely new investment account that is designed to help Canadians save for their first home. It was just introduced by the Canadian federal government this year as a part of its efforts to make home ownership more affordable or at least attainable for Canadians. And in today's video, I wanted to cover this new account and give you some ideas on how you could hopefully use it to your advantage to acquire your first property over the next couple of years. Now, it's certainly not a secret that Canada Canada's in a major housing dilemma that's nowhere near being resolved. We spoke all about this in the most cinematic video I've ever made on my channel. I'd highly recommend that you check that video out after watching this one. But the reality is that Canada's housing prices are going nowhere but up in major cities at least over the next five to 10 years. As it stands right now, we are seeing record levels of immigration in this country at around 1.5% population growth per year and a level of new construction builds, that'll be short 3.5 million homes by 2030 to even just keep the same level of affordability as we're seeing today, which is already very difficult for new buyers and immigrants coming to Canada. So in response to this pressing issue, one new measure launched by the Canadian federal government has been this new sort of hybrid fusion account between the TFSA and the RRSP, known as the Tax-Free Home Savings Account, which you'll be learning all about in today's video. Now, unfortunately, as an individual, there's nothing you can really control in regards to the Canadian housing market, but what is in your control is dropping a like on today's video. Let's get into it. All right, so what exactly is the FHSA? Well, it's a new type of registered investment account that as of 2023 will allow you to save and invest your money towards the purchase of your first home while also taking advantage of some tax-free benefits along the way, like with other registered investment accounts that we're familiar with. Now, what's new about the tax-free first home savings account though is that it enables eligible Canadians aged 18 and up to save up to $40,000 for the purchase of their first home. And in this light, you can contribute $8,000 per year to the account, meaning five years of contributions at the maximum $8,000, but you must also use these funds within 15 years of opening an FHSA or before you turn 71 years old, whichever ends up coming first. Otherwise, the account will be closed and those funds will be returned to you at a taxable rate. As a side note, if you're watching this video, I hope you're buying your first home before you're 70, but better late than never, I guess. Now, in regards as to what makes this account different and even relevant as this new sort of offspring of the TFSA and RRSP is that this account combines the best parts of the RRSP, which gives you tax deduction perks on your taxable income, and the TFSA, which lets your investments grow completely tax-free over time. So this means that the money that you end up putting into this new account and earn in this account goes entirely towards the down payment on your first home. Okay, so if you're wondering how the new FHSA stacks up against the existing and dusty old registered accounts, here are the main similarities and we'll be covering how you can use these in combination to get to your goal of home ownership as quickly as possible. So like the TFSA, the maximum contribution in this case of $40,000 for the FHSA, $8,000 per year, will compound and grow completely tax-free. So any dividend income, interest income, and capital gains, all tax-free. However, unlike the TFSA, uh, the savings must be devoted to the purchase of your first home exclusively, right? Withdrawals not related to buying a home will not meet the criteria of a qualifying withdrawal and will be taxed fully. Now, what about the RRSP though, that currently also offers what's known as the home buyer's plan, allowing you to withdraw up to $35,000 from your RRSP tax-free towards buying a new home. Well, luckily for you, if you've been contributing to your RRSP for years and we're planning on utilizing the home buyer's plan to make a purchase to begin with, well, the CRA has confirmed that a prospective buyer will be able to withdraw from their FHSA, the new account, but then also utilize the RRSP with the home buyer's plan. That's honestly pretty sweet if you've been taking advantage of the RRSP's tax deductible contributions over the past couple of years. The only difference here is that with the RRSP's home buyer plan, you must pay that money back to your RRSP with the tax-free first savings account. There is no need to replace those funds because of course you're simply purchasing a house that's the only use that you can have for those funds. Let's now dive into how you can put 
the FHSA to the best use in combination with the TFSA and the RRSP because honestly, you can really start creating a solid game plan for yourself with these three accounts in your arsenal. First and foremost, I want to mention that if you are unable to reach the maximum contribution limit of $40,000 in the FHSA within the next few years, that's not a problem. You can still utilize the savings and investments from the account in combination with other new tax proposals to aid in the purchase of your home. You don't need to use the entire $40,000, but let's strategize this for a second, taking the average home price in Ontario as of right now being $660. $62,000, although this is you know, skewed by Toronto and Vancouver prices, but the example stays the same and you can still tailor this to your own income and average house price in your specific region. So at an average house price of $662,000 across Canada, this means that you can put down as little as 5% on the first $500,000, which by the way, I would recommend you do if you're struggling to buy a home in the first place. And then the excess, in this case, $162,000, would require an additional 10% down payment for that value. So we're looking here at a total down payment of $36,200 required. And we'll consider an additional $10,000 in this case in closing costs on a property like this one, bringing the total out of pocket required to $46,200. Now it should be taken into account that over the next you know, three to five years, property values will most likely have increased again, but the effect of the down payment would be relatively small. So we're not going to take this into account for this scenario, but I do want to mention this so that you're aware of the fact that that is a reality. Now, if you already have adequate investments in your TFSA and your RRSP, then that's fantastic and you won't even need to use the FHSA, but considering you're starting at nothing and your primary goal is to buy a house exclusively, I'd first consider maxing out the $8,000 per year of the FHSA first as the growth is tax-free like the TFSA, but then you can also deduct $8,000 from your taxable income like with the RRSP. It's really the best of both worlds in this case if you are saving up for a house. So even if you're working and making say $60,000 per year, you'll still gain RRSP contribution room uh, over those years, which just accumulates for when you do end up wanting to use this and contribute to your RRSP down the line. Say you buy a house in three to four years, the RRSP contribution room gained during this period will still just be waiting for you, ready to be contributed to. While the FHSA tax deductibility, it simply goes away once you've gone ahead and purchased your first home. So taking advantage of that right now is definitely the best course of action. But considering you contribute the $8,000 to the account over the next four years and choose to buy an ETF, let's say such as zero that compounds at an average 7% return year over year, well, right there, you're looking at $46,000 in account value alone after four years, which in theory would be enough to buy a $662,000 home at the minimum down payment required plus closing costs. And that's not even considering the tax savings that you're getting from deducting the $8,000 contributions from your taxable income, where those savings could then be contributed to your TFSA for even further investment growth. So if you're dead set on buying a home and manage to save and invest say 10 to $15,000 per year across these various accounts, then you should be well on your way to buying your first home in the next couple of years. So to summarize, the Liberal government's 2022 federal budget proposal at least attempted to address the pressing issue of home affordability in Canada, but to achieve this goal, the government has proposed a multi-pronged approach aimed at increasing new home production, doubling the first-time home buyer's credit, and introducing a new savings plan to help Canadians afford their first home. And although I do believe the above-mentioned initiatives are a start, they're definitely more of a band-aid solution rather than a solution for the underlying real root cause of Canadian home values, increasing at a pace that far exceeds increases in disposable income, making the economic gap between homeowners and non-home owners larger by the year, but that's a topic for another video. By the way, if you want to open up an FHSA yourself to take advantage of its tax benefits, then look no further than Quest Trade, which at the time of filming this video is one of the only self-directed stock brokerages 
that offers the FHSA. If you use the link down below in the description, you'll get $50 in free trades on Quest Trade. Definitely make sure to claim that offer. Thanks a lot for watching today's video. If you have any questions, leave them down below in the comments. And also, if you enjoyed the video and found value, don't forget, drop a like and subscribe to the channel for new and upcoming content. I'll see you in the next one.